Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Good morning, Six Pack Philosophers. It's night. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we are discussing the world's favorite new superhero, Will Power. Yes. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? I don't know what that was. I, I loved it. You, you made that up after the music started coming, didn't you? Yes. I, I was a fan of I that. I want to be Will Power. I, <laughs> You got, yeah. you got to put a willpower up. <gasps> we. Oh boy, I turned like red. <laughs> Great big W. Wow. Yeah. Right there. On, <sighs> yeah. I, I'll tell you about my superhero in a minute. Uh, we are drinking Axis IPA. Axis IPA from the Real L Brewing Company in Blanco, Texas. Uh, so I'm excited that this is a, a Real L and that it, it, it's an IPA. Um, and. That it is 7.1% ABV. It is 7. That's 1. the most exciting part, part so far. Um, for our listeners who are not aware, it is not unusual for us to record more than one show in a day. Right now, this is show number three. Show number three. We have had two beers so far over One beer and point, one wine. Sorry. We, had, we have had two alcoholics. Drinks, two alcoholic we drinks. Two We've alcoholics. had three alcoholics, and so we're having two alcoholic drinks. Uh, two alcoholic drinks, over 10% each. Um, so we are happy to be sobering up with a. <laughs> I am really glad you told one. that you brought up that we, uh, you know, sometimes record more than one episode because mm-hmm. I've got this fear that somebody's going to come on and go, do they ever fucking change clothes? I know. They wear the same thing every time. I know. Uh, so, so she was talking about the 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 superhero willpower. Willpower. I have it actually. So good. It does. Uh, I have actually wanted to. Uh, if I ever made a superhero, I already know the superhero I'd make. Yeah. It's just in time. Just in time. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, willpower and just in time would be the. Uh, uh, we couldn't call them the dynamic duo. They'd be what the average duo. Yeah. yeah, they would duo. <laughs> they would be a duo. Yeah, yeah. It's a surprising duo. Yeah. yeah. Remember the? Uh, um, yeah, these guys seem lame, but fuck, they get it done. Remember the <laughs> the show on Saturday Night Live? They used to have that. Uh, um, oh, the yeah uh, something gay duo cartoon. That they I would don't put think on? they were called yeah. the gay duo. No, they did. Oh, they, they were did. the something <laughs> inscrupulously gay duo. I think's what it was. It was pretty. And funny. they drove a dick car. They drove a dick car. Yeah. Yeah, and they wore purple yeah, yeah. spandex. Okay. Yes. For some reason, the Batman character like was, was always was like getting behind behind Robin. For some reason. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, at, at the end of of their their superhero movie, somebody would say, "Son, they're not the heroes we deserve, but they're the ones we got." <laughs> <laughs> Ambiguously gay. Duo. Ambiguously God. gay duo. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've forgotten about that. One, uh, okay. So. Uh, Willpower. Willpower. So, <laughs> sorry. So, what we're actually talking about today is the con- if you haven't figured it out, you're right. You probably have, but we're actually talking about not. the concept of willpower, uh, the uh, control over your general shit to do what you want instead yeah. of things you know you're not supposed to. Well, actually, I was going to start with the definition. Okay. So, I like defini- our definition: the control over general shit. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You should write a dictionary. Yeah. So is that Will Power's power? He can control general shit? Just his own. Yeah. He can control his own general shit. I think that's everybody's <laughs> power. Unless you're really old. <laughs> and then it depends. Uh, <laughs> that's terrible. Oh. All right. Um, you can tell uh, this is show number third, three. Third show, yeah. So Will Power, the definition is uh, control... Ex- uh, sorry. Control exerted to do something or restrain impulses. So uh, this directly relates to impulse control and self control, and I think it's also good names for superpowers. Yeah, or super heroes. Ace and Gary. Sorry, go ahead. Anyway, <laughs> um, so I, th- I think it's really interesting that we talk about Im- impulse control here because uh, another way that I've heard it discussed is that willpower is um, your ability to control yourself generally. Yeah. Uh, and I think this this actually has really interesting implications, whether you phrase it as impulse or controlling yourself uh, on arguments of free will. If willpower is your ability to control yourself, who or what is controlling you at the times when you're not controlling yourself? 
impulse control. Im- elephant? Yeah. Elephant rider? Yeah. 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 The elephant. Yeah. But isn't that you? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that's disturbing. That's disturbing. Well, I, well, I, it, I think the idea yeah. of willpower... Um, Being able to resist your own impulses. Yeah, I, I think the idea of controlling yourself, controlling your impulses, is <clears throat> that there are two yous. Uh, one of them that is animalistic, and one of them that is not. And so I think the idea is that it's still you when you are indulging in your impulses and your, um, you know, your you're not thinking about it, you're, you're acting without thinking, you're maybe speaking without thinking, and that um, when you are taking a breath before you take an action, that this is your more evolved um, it, self that's coming through. It, 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 it's, it's the id and the ego com- uh, right. uh, struggling there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and I think it's really interesting that you've, you've brought up the idea of... Um, it, it, the theory's got a few different names. I've heard elephant rider. The other one that I've heard is one brain to mind theory. Yeah. Um, but basically, the idea that that a person is of two minds uh, in their everyday life, one mind that acts very quickly and uh, instinctually. Well, the term I've heard is lazily. So it, it, it develops a, a way of doing things and just regurgitates that same Habitually action. almost. Yeah. yeah. Over and over and over. Okay. Um, and the cool thing is we get to develop things like muscle memory where a, a batter for baseball can repeat the same thing yeah, yeah. over and over without having to sit there and, and, and calculate it. Yeah. So, you don't have to go well, as far as that, driving a stick shift. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and, and I think that calling it lazy, um, because of the negative connotation that exists around the word lazy in our society – is disingenuous because there is... It's actually efficient. It is efficient. It is um, hugely advantageous to not have to think about shifting gears while you're also considering all the other drivers on the road, all of the things that are happening around you. I I think you're right. Uh, And and again, I think it's because of connotation of words. I don't, Mm -hmm. I I think it's a good word. I think, I think, I think it is a lazy thing to do, Mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. You know, I think about my first sergeant told me when I, in the Marine Corps, that if you want to know the best way to do something, ask the laziest person to do it because they'll figure out the fastest, most efficient way to get it done. Yeah. And you know, watch that and, 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 and go from there. Uh, that doesn't mean that that person is the best person, but but they're going to figure that out. Yeah. So ex- exactly, and and I always <clears throat> consider that uh, as an engineer, my job is to uh, help people with their laziness. I'm glad yeah. you bring that up. I just I just Wait, wondered I if that a, means that engineers whose job is to make things more efficient are inherently the most lazy of us all. Oh yeah, I mean, and that—that's actually well, a or, common or, discussion engineers have among themselves. Of like, it's my job to be lazy, like yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that, that's not and to help other or, people be lazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then fire them when we get them lazy enough. <laughs> in, in, yeah. in, in all reality, yeah. Yeah. but 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 yeah. you could replace that with efficient, and you'd be you'd yeah, be saying yeah. the same thing. Yeah, we we, we get everybody to a, to a one third lazy level, then fire you know two thirds <laughs> of it, and have that one person doing all three of their jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we work them down. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, in, in, in all reality, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it, I, I think efficiency and laziness are, are intertwined. That's what the yeah. industrial revolution yeah. was. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, another interesting thing about willpower is this ability to control our, our impulsive yeah. mind is highly valued in society. Yeah. Um, willpower has a positive connotation, but even more than that, uh, if you look at our tales of of superheroes, there are entire superheroes whose only power is their willpower. Punisher, yeah, uh, has no superpower at all, but he can withstand torture of crazy amounts. He 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 constantly puts himself through things, so uh, he he won't express any any kind of you know uh, pain. Um, the thing uh, yeah. from Fantastic Four. Um, one of his strongest attributes is his willpower. Um, we uh, see this in Spider-Man. Uh, you know. Then you have the opposite when you have cases like 
uh, the Incredible Hulk, who uh, yeah, uh, the impulse is his power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and and so uh, and even even superheroes whose uh, willpower isn't directly tied to their powers, uh, we see them. Um, Batman off- doesn't kill. Well, well, often what we see is when they're facing their average foes, they just kind of you know flick them away. But it's when they face their their epic battles yeah. that all their powers suddenly seem null, and it's their willpower that usually drags them across that finish line to yeah. beat the enemy. So, so you know, this is something that that not only do we value generally and have a positive connotation for, but we almost see as People who have enough of this are superhuman. Oh, that's yeah. that, that's the American myth, the Horatio Alger story, the person that that, that starts with nothing and through their yeah. own force of will, br- br- pull you know, your, pulls yourselves yourself. up by your bootstraps. Yeah. yeah, that's the American myth. Oh yeah, and and, and and it's built around that. Well, and I would argue um, our demonization of letting your impulses control you and our um, heroic view of willpower from the trope of the Manic Pixie Dream Girl. Um, It was something that you saw that gained a lot of popularity in the early to mid-2000s, if I remember correctly. Late 90s, early 2000s, yeah. Um, But fell very quickly out of fashion when people got exhausted with it. Um, You know, there was this idea that she would pull the dull guy who is, uh, you know, not spontaneous at all, out of his funk of sorts, um, and was kind of a heroic character. But when exposed to her over and over again, it was exhausting and even kind of irritating how, um, how just completely out of control she was. Yeah, yeah. 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 Scott Pilgrim Saves the World is one of those movies like that that I can think of. Yeah, um, yeah, it was like those people that you meet that are good in small doses. Yeah, you know, and I think I just that, call that people. And I well, there, there you go. But um, I, I think that exhibits that we're okay with um, spontaneity and impulse indulgence in small doses, but that is not what we really yeah. admire. Yeah, no, I, I I completely agree. So uh, you know this this brings an interesting question. We have this trait. Uh, we have a, a loose definition of it, though. I think there could be some argument and some philosophy around the definition itself. Because um, there always is. Yeah. And we highly admire this thing. Yeah. So I think a, an important question for us to ask ourselves as a species is: How does it work? Mm-hmm. How how do we harness this? How do we get more? I mean, if we if we want it so bad, how do we get and what it? What is will? I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, the for the longest time, I'm going to say the most influential study on this in the 20th century <coughs> um, was one, and at the time they called it ego depletion. Yeah. Um, but the study revolved around this idea that your willpower is kind of like a fuel tank. And it will run out, and you will have to succumb to your impulses. Um, and it can be refueled with rest or even giving into your impulses. Uh, we'll refuel this tank and rebuild your willpower, and then you get to start all over with choosing how to spend your willpower. And it becomes an economic game of, you know, where is the best place for me to invest my willpower? Because yeah. I can't invest it in everything. Um, They showed this with an experiment that was repeated many times and derivative experiments were done and some that weren't derivative at all, but the, the, the primary experiment they used involved cookies and radishes. Um, oh, uh, was it? Ugh, radishes suck. It may have been chocolates. It may have been chocolates. So don't quote me on that. It was cookies or chocolate. It was sweets. That's the yeah, important part. Sweets and radishes. Yeah. So they, they had these two suck. bowls out there. And they brought in two groups separately, and they told one group, you can only eat the sweets, but you have to resist the radishes, which would be, for most, a, a fairly simple task. And they told the other group the exact opposite. They, they can only eat the radishes, but they have to resist the sweets, which, you know, we can imagine. Not many of those radishes probably got eaten. I would have eaten the radishes. 
Do you like radish? I do. I do. Do you like it raw or cooked? Either or both? Way. Okay. Either way. Yeah. I'm not a sweets person, though, yeah. so I don't like sweet things. But anyway, so the next thing I did... kale than radishes. Anyway. Radishes are fine. Anyway, it's, 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 it, this is not... Irrelevant, sorry. Flux feed as radishes. Um, Good. But, uh, but the next thing they did is they, they took them in a room... And they had them, they gave them a puzzle. But unbeknownst to the subjects, the puzzle was impossible to complete. And they measured how long they worked on the puzzle. And their theory was their willpower was being spent on this puzzle, but eventually it would drain and they would give up on the puzzle. And they found in this study that... Um, the people who succumbed to their chocolate desires spent longer on the puzzle than those who had to resist them. And their logic was the people who resisted the chocolate had already spent some of their willpower. So the people who had been told that they couldn't eat the cookies but did anyway? No, no, no. The people, they didn't eat the cookies, but they had to resist eating the cookies. They were told not to eat the cookies. But you were saying the people who succumbed to their desire. Yeah, so the people who were told they could eat the cookies went longer. Oh, okay. And the people who were told they couldn't eat the cookies quit So sooner. there was a presumption that the indulgence was the cookies. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and, and so the people who couldn't eat the cookies had spent some of their willpower already, and so they didn't last as long on the impossible task. Sounds like and some it, really it, junk science to me, but okay. Well, and it sounds like they went in uh, with the presumption that willpower would be exhausted. Yeah, well, and, and that's not completely unusual. Um, actually, there's two kinds of studies. One that, that forms a hypothesis and then you know tries to test it. Uh, it, it, it can mm -hmm. be criticized like you just did for mm -hmm. that reason. The other type is where people go in and collect a whole bunch of data on a whole bunch of things, you know, take this drug and we're going to collect a whole bunch of data and see yeah. what it does. Uh, the criticism there is if you collect a wide enough data set, something will correlate. Yeah. Right. And so then, you know, so you got to pick which direction are you going with your experiment. Um, other experiments were done that confirmed this, this, uh, this, this theory. And even a meta-analysis was done on all these experiments and found very strong evidence for this. However... Later on, criticism of the studies and the meta-analysis said that the meta-analysis was strongly influenced by publishing bias. Do you know what publishing bias is? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where you, you want to give the data that, that people want so it would be published. Otherwise, you wouldn't, uh, you know, they won't cover your information if you get, get bad data. Yeah. Or data so, they don't like. So if, if you do the experiment and the experiment comes out and it doesn't work, you say, oh, we broke it. And you throw your papers away. You don't publish yeah. that. So, so publishing bias. Yeah. So uh, then some other meta-analysis started to be done that tried to correct for publishing bias in various ways. And there were about four or five of these. Um, and the studies found that at best, ego depletion um, is only a third as significant as previous studies had shown it to be. Yeah, I wouldn't believe that. And at worst, it doesn't exist. Yeah, that's not uh, believable. <laughs> so, so one of these. Uh, another really interesting fact about ego depletion is they've done further studies where they repeated this experiment, but before they did the experiment... They told one group of subjects about ego depletion and how it works. And they told another group of subjects that willpower is unlimited. And the, the effect was stronger in those they told about ego depletion and didn't exist in those they told that willpower is unlimited. <laughs> so it seems like one of these things... Self-fulfilling. Yeah, you know, it, yeah. it's almost like I, I compare it to, uh, to your spiritual experience with whatever religion you have. It doesn't seem to exist with people that don't share your religion. You know, it, 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 it's funny and tangentially related. Mm -hmm. uh, I give a, a, a benchmark to my kids right before right before the standardized state testing. And I don't care what that benchmark says at the end of it. I want it. But the data that's reported is, man, you guys you guys did great on this. You mm -hmm. guys are gonna, gonna gonna blow this away. Yeah. And they blow it away every year. And every year this the testing is higher than what you would have predicted on that that benchmark. And I, I wonder if that's not part of it is it's the fact that they 
they expect that they're going to. Well, uh, you know, we we were talking about uh, uh, racial biases. Me and yeah. Anna stereotype recently stereotype bias. Stere- yeah. yeah, not necessarily racial. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, but but the fact that if you take a, a class full of students and you tell them Asians are better at math, the Asian students will will actually do better on a test. They'll work harder, yeah. Yeah, and do it. And the other students will be like, oh, oh I'm not Asian. I and they'll slough off, yeah. and you will watch the scores go thump yep. as soon as you tell them yep. that, yep. you know? Yep. Um, but yeah, so so it's, it's, it's an interesting result to me that willpower um, seems to be strongly correlated to your belief... In willpower, and and I've actually experienced this kind of the opposite way uh, in the past. Uh, I can tell you that as someone who does not believe in free will, that whenever I am trying to get over something, I convince myself with free will arguments. Even though I don't believe it, I believe the effect of telling myself it's there yeah. is a, a, a powerful motivator. Um, so... It, it it almost feels like maybe willpower is all placebo. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think I think it probably is placebo, but I think it's also, I think it's a skill, and I think it's a skill that if you practice, you like anything else, you get better at. Uh, and 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 you know, if if I practice withholding my, uh, some desire for myself, it becomes easier to withhold that. Yeah, so so that's a. Do you have anything? Okay, so that's a really interesting thing. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up because that kind of goes into our next topic. Uh, you can actually see more on practicing impulse control generally, yeah. which uh, you know imp- uh, willpower defines uh, here. If you go and listen to our episode on addiction, we yeah, talk yeah. about it a lot. Um, but one other thing that they found is very influential in your development of willpower. If you want to develop your willpower is mindfulness meditation. And they've actually done brain scans, and what they've found uh, when doing brain scans on those who do mindfulness meditation is, have you ever been sitting in the shower, been sitting in the car, and your mind just wanders off, and you start thinking about random stuff and just wandering in and out? Every day. Mine did that a minute ago. Yeah. (laughs) I'm sorry, I was trying, but it did. So when that happens, that, that they your brain actually changes in, in where it starts lighting up. And it is something that scientists call the default node network. That is the network that is activated when your brain turns off, basically. Yeah. 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 People who practice mindfulness meditation, actually they find while they're meditating are kind of fighting that default node network. And they don't do that as much. That would make sense. Yeah. And so it seems that this default node network, uh, while uh, you know some of my most creative moments have been in that default mode network, seems to be like the trade-off to willpower. Talk to me about what mindful meditation is. Yeah, so mindful meditation is a form of meditation in which the whole idea is for you in your... In your mode of concentration, whether that involves you closing your eyes or humming or whatever, for you to be very present of mind, for you to practice thinking about what's going on, for you to practice actively working on your problem solving or what's going on with your body, maybe. It's, uh, as I understand it, it's largely a response to more traditional meditation where you're trying to push thoughts out of your mind yeah, yeah. and and blank everything out. See, I took um, it as I, I, I tell me if I'm wrong here because my understanding of it the way I the way I understood that is I'm going to sit here and I'm going to focus on a, a problem. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm going to be focusing on. What you know, get, get relaxed, maybe go sit in a dark room or something, but I am going to be focused on solving this issue. Not necessarily. Um Although so it could be. It could be. So um, at least as I've understood it when I've looked into it, um, so my first introductions to meditation were um, kind of like if you were to imagine yourself in an empty bubble and when thoughts would try to permeate that space, you would actively try to push them out yeah, and keep yeah. the bubble empty. I understand that. Whereas... One. 
uh, mindful meditation is going to be you allow that thought to enter, you process it, you explore it, and when you have completed exploring that thought, you allow it to leave. Okay. Um, so maybe... Sounds exhausting. Well, it is. Yeah. 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 Um, so maybe the thought that comes in is a problem that you need to think about. Um, maybe you think that's what's going to happen, and instead some other thought comes in, and you process that. Yeah, and maybe you, don't even, maybe you don't even get to the thing that you thought you were going to mindfully meditate on. Yeah. It's, it's trying not to be ADD. <laughs> you know? I have a real problem with that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe you should try mindfulness meditation. Uh, yeah. Guys. Now, I know that there are a lot of different styles of that, mm-hmm. but that's been what I've seen when I've looked into it, to be clear. I am getting really close to the end of the show, and we haven't talked about the beer yet. So mm. do we want to stop here and go ahead and get that done? I think we do. This is Axis IPA from... What is it? Uh, Real L in Blanco, Blanco. Texas. Yeah, yeah, okay. Blanco. Blanco, Texas. Um, uh, Madam uh, Mistress, you want to start it? You haven't sure. started in a while. So, um, I've actually had this beer before, and I liked it then. I like it now. In the distant ish past, I wasn't a huge fan of IPAs, although I definitely liked them more than Mike. This is one of my more preferred IPAs, though. Um, it is very hop forward. Um, the hops are a, an, a strong note in it, but it manages to have a, a light body like you would expect, light to medium, um, and a really pleasant floral smell and taste to it. <laughs> I love this look that you're giving me right now. But that's what I'm getting from this. Um, it is bitter, um, but I don't think that it's overly bitter. I thoroughly enjoy it. And go ahead and throw something, because I'm giving it a 3.2. 3.2, okay. Yes. Um, well, and as fairness as I can be. Mm. Um, I, I, I don't like IPAs, um, and this is an IPA. It's uh, it tastes to me like uh, somebody took Dos Equis and filtered it through a cowboy's crotch after a day out on the range. I don't like it. Uh, it's it's. Um, is this how cowboy's crotch tastes? <laughs> you should you should come out one day. I'll show you. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll take your word. For I, it, it's uh, it, it's just. I don't. Honestly, I don't like anything about it, and that, that that that's a that's a bad place for me to be because I really think it's probably a decent IPA. So I'm in a bad place where I don't like IPAs. Hmm. I don't like this, so it's probably doing a good job of being what I don't like. So th- that's really interesting because so, this is like the first IPA in six or so. Yeah. That you haven't liked. It tastes honestly. If I give it a real flavor, mm-hmm. and I, I've described an IPA like this before, but it's been a long time since I've done it. Mm-hmm. It tastes like pine needles to me. It's mm. got that, that that flavor to it, and I just that makes I, sense. To I me. don't like that flavor. Uh, the, it, and, and, and it's it, acidic. There, there's hoppiness to it, but there's also an acidic uh, yeah. to, to it that I just I do not care for. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and split the difference here because uh, between what I think it is a fair rating and what I would do, you know, an IPA guy and a non IPA guy, because just for Mike, I'd rate this about a one. Uh, but I know it's higher than that. So I'm, I'm going to go one eight. Okay. Uh, I, I really like this. I was actually not excited at all for this beer. And I knew you'd like it. And, and I do. I, uh, I think it is hot forward without being that, that, uh, you know, stereotype we've said of smacking the in the face with a bag of hops uh i think it 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 has a a green start a nice transition the ending is really interesting to me it almost ends on a lemon drop finish that's what it is it's it's slightly citrus but not quite and not sweet enough if but that lemon drop had been stored in a cowboy's crotch no it's it's lemon zest 
It's not lemon drop like it's, the candy. It, it, I'm saying lemon drop like the candy. Okay. It, 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 it's got a bit of citrus to it, but it's got a sweetness on the back end. Now, it's not... I, I may be over-exaggerating the whole experience okay. but by saying that. It, it's it's definitely not so sweet that I, I equate it to you know a, a Kool-Aid type drink. It's mm, still mm -mm. beer. But, I mean, that is the, the balance of your citrus and sweet that I'm detecting in it. Um, I think it, it it does a great job for what it is. Uh, also, at a, at a seven point two, it uh, it manages to maintain that beer feel uh, without burning you, and mm -hmm. and you know you could you could kind of drink these throughout the day and 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 probably be fine. So I I, I will give it to you. I think the texture is good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm giving it a three four. All right. So all right. So. One eight three four. And what was yours? Three two. Three two. Three, two. Okay. So it'll yeah. it'll come in. Yeah. See. Middle. Above bitch. Yeah. Above bitch mark. Yeah. Above <laughs> the bitch mark. Yeah. I, I I probably I probably fucked over this company and I apologize for no. that. But it's just you know what. what Real L has had some good beers with us before. Uh, They've yeah, had some and, flops. And, and fairly, if you're if you're listening to this this show. Anytime an IPA is up, you ought to just throw mine out anyway. So uh, <laughs> maybe that's what I'll start doing when we have IPAs on the show. Is I'll give the average with Mike and the average without Mike. Yeah, I try and be fair. <laughs> no, uh, I know you do. I know you do. Uh, but, uh, you know. So, fuck date lawnmower. Um, I have a little universe. Yes. I know. It's so... I. That's why, if anybody's looking at the video and has seen me, like, spinning my beer a lot, that's what I'm doing is I'm... It, it's your painting. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, this beer will be appreciated by people who like beer. But I don't think this is your general audience. I think I just got insulted. I think you did. I don't know that you didn't deserve it, but I think you did get insulted. No. I'm a beer. Sorry, sorry. I meant by people who really like beer. I'm oh. a beer. <laughs> Just a stout. I don't like this shit. Uh, I don't know. We had a stout earlier, and you tore it up. It was shit too. <laughs> it wasn't very good. The wine, however, was outstanding. Excellent. Awesome. Wow. Um, so. Whatever, Mike. Anyway, Mike's been a puss all night. Um, yeah, he's been in a mood about, about the beer for sure, about the alcohol for <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I've probably been kind of an ass. I don't think the... anything's gotten over a two. No, no, he did give no, the wine over a it two. It was like a two, two five. five. It was a two five. Yeah, bitch mark. Yeah, bitch yeah. mark. Anyway, 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 anyway not, the not the point here. That's a um, good rating. Will it get you laid? In certain circumstances, it will, but I wouldn't bet on it. Yeah, and not if you want to sleep with me. Yeah, th th this isn't going to take you from zero to hero, but no. uh, but you know it's, it's not going to hurt you with most people. Some people it would definitely will. It seems. It, however, if your boobs are nice enough, this still might help. Yeah, it won't help. hurt you. It won't hurt you. I was going to yeah. say it won't hurt your chances if you've got great boobs. So I'm going to put this on a on a second day beer, and okay. I'll tell you the reason. Um, being an IPA, and this is an, a general thing with IPAs, uh, I'm not going to gamble a first date. But if I have done my research right and I know my date likes IPAs, I think this is a great one to bring. Uh, so that that's that's where it comes in a second date. J John likes his first date to be a much higher ABV. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it I don't depends. know what was Blue Moon. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean that that was that was her yeah. first date beer. Of course, uh, it was several Blue Moons. <laughs> yes, and there wasn't a great selection to be fair. <laughs> It was the best they had. It was the best they had. Uh, so I'm going I'm to put this as a, as a second day beer, uh, but know who you're bringing it to before you do, because as we've seen, this can hurt you with the wrong crowd. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Y'all are saying fuck. so many dates. words. Um, and, and, and here's the weird thing is, is I do think it's a lawnmower beer. Yeah. Um, I'm not, not, not going to drink it, but I think your, your IPA people, so this would be a very refreshing beer for, for a moment. Yeah. You know? You're out working hay on that big heavy machinery. It'd be perfect before you hurt yourself in the machinery. Yeah. So, um, oh come on, y'all don't work hay. You don't understand how the, the necessity to have you know 15 beers while you're doing so. So the point that you hurt yourself. Somebody always gets hurt. Somebody always gets hurt. So you just hope it's not too bad. Sometimes it's their heart. Sometimes they lose a limb. One of the two. Well, whatever, whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah, so the the last thing that I want to talk about uh, before we close out is uh, 
another strategy that was was actually pretty interesting to me when it came to willpower, uh, and that is uh, uh, questioning. <laughs> I'm sorry. I oh, just, you're fine. Every time you say willpower, I see Will Smith with a with a with a cape in my mind. I'm it's sorry, just, it's, I did it's, that. It's killing yeah. me. Is is kind telling of. yourself, can I, as opposed to I can. So research. So you're challenging yourself. Well, not not even not questioning. even not yeah questioning. Uh, so research and this is actually starting to make its way into uh, uh, literature on how to break addiction. Mm-hmm is not to tell yourself, I can do this, uh, but to, to ask yourself, can I not smoke today? Can I not eat chocolate today? Can yeah, I, yeah. W- w- whatever your thing is, um, and have a reason and an intelligent conversation with yourself about the pros and cons of doing it. And in fact, it has shown uh, that harping on not doing something, harping on... I'm not going to eat that chocolate. I'm not going to eat that chocolate. Actually, me- makes you more likely to eat the chocolate. Uh, really? Rather, yeah. That that that's that's strange. I can remember when I was uh, 18, 19 years old, and uh, I had some I had some goals for myself, and uh, I, I I took a little sheet of paper, and it, very small, and I just wrote I can. And I taped it up in the top of the windshield of my car, so when I drove, I could look at it and think about that. And and, and I remember it having a, having a positive effect on me. Um, you know, but now just because it kept my my mind would focus kept you back. Focused, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, well, and I can say that when I'm trying to say when I'm trying to abstain from an action or an indulgence, um, the the most success that I've found is not exposing myself to it and in exposure, including um, like when I've had the most success, not smoking. Um, don't fucking ask me how long it's been since I've had a cigarette. Cause now all I'm going to think about is that I want a cigarette and then it's going to make it that much more likely yeah. that I'm going to go and buy some cigarettes. Yeah. Um, you know, and if I can just block out all of the access and, you know, not hang out with the people who are going to promote that influence, um, you know, people who are around, when they ask about it, say, look, don't talk to me about that. You're making the shit harder. Um, I'm that's, sorry. <laughs> that's where I have found more success is when I can shut it all out and not harp on it. Huh. See, I, 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 I'm just the opposite in my, yeah. in my experiences. I, the fact that it's, it's got to be right in front of my face if mm-hmm. I'm going to do something. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I'm, I'm kind of in the middle. So, like, if I harp on, I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to do that, it, it makes it harder for me. Mm-hmm. However, um, one place where me and her differ on kind of the same plane. She and I. Doesn't matter. No, no, her and I. Oh. I don't know. I don't know she. Um, anyway, my pronoun is her and only her. <laughs> I don't use she. Thank you. Go ahead. But, but one place where we differ is when I uh, resist something for. Hmm, Sorry, our ghost is throwing yeah. things. Uh, when I resist something for a substantial and long enough period of time. Uh, I can look back and say, I resisted this thing for a month. And to me, that's a really empowering feeling. So I'm like, I can do another month now, you know? Yeah. But for her looking back and saying, I've done it for a month, like... I'm coming work. up on the time I'm about to fail. Yeah. And yeah. and so it's it, it's a debilitating thing. So, uh, you know, it, it's interesting at this table, you know, I didn't plan this at all, yeah. but we have kind of a spectrum here yeah, on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, of of uh, how willpower is working. And it yeah. kind of, you know... It's the, the two different theories and I guess something in the middle for me. It, 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 well, it works I, for me, though, because every morning I get up and I say I'm not going to kill anybody today. And I've, I, I haven't done that in, in weeks. See, and so. I just stay away from people that I want to kill. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, well, and I'll say this. So I was, I was talking about um, impulse control and trying to abstain from things. In the same vein, um, if I'm trying to actively do something having it in my face all the time and having yeah. to face the fact that if I'm not doing it, it's there waiting on me. Um, keeps me, like, kind of forces me to deal with it. And, you know, if I can make it in such a way that 
doing the thing that I want myself to be doing is the only way to deal with it, then I'm more likely to actually do it. Um, so, I mean, not harping on it is the best way for me to abstain from something, but I've got to harp on it if I want to get myself to do something, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay. So. Okay. Anyway. So that was all I had. If you guys have anything, or no, I think we pretty much covered this, didn't we? Yeah, I think that so. was a, It was good. I liked it. That was an interesting topic. I I, I was a little worried. Well, I try. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, did, did you put a little note to yourself? Try. Yeah. Okay. If somebody wants to um, draw willpower for us, please draw willpower. As oh. long as there are no exposed genitals, I'll put it on the wall here. And for our YouTube people, and, and really <laughs> Twitter, wherever you can get in contact with us, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, uh, tell us your experience with willpower. Uh, are you motivated by I can? Does it does it does that harping on it hurt you, or are you something completely different? Yeah. I want to know how you experience willpower. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Absolutely. So anyway, um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you want to support the show, you can do so by hitting up Patreon on patreon.com slash sixpackphilosophy. Buy some super cool swag with hopefully some new stuff coming in soon at uh, teespring.com slash source <laughs> dot, dot com slash source slash sixpackphilosophy. Uh, search the World Wide Web for our website or our social media or any of the numerous articles that have been written about us. Um, simply by searching Six Pack Philosophy in your favorite search engine. If you're not sure if you're on the World Wide Web, if you <laughs> see the first three letters are WWW, you've made it. You've made it. You've yes. made it. If there's an upside down cone thingy with a rounded top, you're That's probably ice on cream. It. You're probably <laughs> eating ice cream. If it, looks, if it looks kind of like a snow cone and it's probably in your bottom right corner on your desktop, it, or the, the top right off. corner on your phone. It's you're already on it. You're on. You're, you're already on it. If you're listening to us, you're on the web. That's the information superhighway. If you it. hear this, you're on the web. Just do the other things. Maybe you do. their friend gave them a cassette tape of us. We're prob- uh, I shouldn't say that. Hey, are we available on cassette tapes? <laughs> no, we could be. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've had fun, and we hope you have too. Cheers. 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 That was nice. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.